people. Let's stand to our feet and let's shout hallelujah. And let's send it around the world. Amen. Praise God. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Yes, let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Aren't we glad that we get to release the highest praise? Amen. Amen. We are so glad. And, and I want to thank you all for coming to church. Thank you for uh, watching us. And we just want to reassure everyone this church is safe. This is, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. And that's happening at different churches that won't happen here because uh, we have pled the blood of Jesus over this place. I mean, we have covered it. We didn't march around here praying. And I think our oil stains are still out there. Amen. Because that's good old olive oil. Amen. We poured the olive oil out there. So nothing is going to come and bother us. It is, you know, but if you do arrive to church late, like more than 15 minutes late, you're going to have to call somebody because the doors are locked. Amen. <laughs> that is uh, something that's actually in place right now. So, amen. Um, let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into the word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, look at your name and say, get your Bible out. Okay, at home, get your Bible out. Amen. Make sure you're tracking with us and you know, type in there. We, we got our Bibles, Pastor. We ready? Because I know that when the word goes forth, how many of you guys have been helped by the word? I mean, think about it. What would you do if you didn't have the word? I mean, because it's one thing to pray, right? It's, it's good. We always should pray. But, you know, you got to get on these promises because these promises bring encouragement. And you start reading, OK, this is what the Bible says. And so this is what I expect. And so that's going to help us you know, not only now, but forever. Amen. And so I, I, I just want to preach this word to keep us encouraged and keep us on the right track. I titled this message tonight, Keep Believing God. Keep Believing God. Look at your name and say, keep on believing. Keep on believing. Yeah, you know what? This is something that we're going to do until we get to heaven. We're not going to stop. And so you have to keep believing God. You may have started out believing God for something and maybe it's something great. Well, you know what? Sometimes it takes a little while. Amen. Anybody been there? But how many know um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Amen. And so there are some desires coming, but you don't want to give up because if you give up, you miss that. And so you miss that tree of life. The tree of life is uh, on its way. Amen. But it's going to be a matter of, are you going to keep believing? And so let's go to numbers and you know, what you know about God determines, uh, how much you will believe him for. And, and also it determines if you will continue to believe because sometimes people start out believing for a while and then they get weary. Amen. Anybody in here with me? You say, wow, you know, it's taking a little too long. And so they could change. Well, what if, your tree of life was coming. Now, if your tree of life was coming, but you stopped believing, then now you could miss it. And so I say, if you started out believing, you might as well keep believing. Anybody in here with me? If you started out doing this thing, you might as well just stick with it and don't, and don't give up because there's an, an abundant harvest coming for you. 2319, uh, Numbers 2319. So we know this and we, we reference this a lot. God is not a man. So let's establish that right away. So when we start talking about our God, we're not talking about a man. And so we start talking about like, how many know there are limitations in this world? Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Over there in the corner. Maybe I got an amen at home. There's limitations. And so man always tries to uh, put you in a box. Amen. So what, is, what do I mean by that? Man will give you the logical explanation as to why Something can happen or he will tell you exactly how it must happen in order for it to happen. And so there are limitations. Amen. But God operates according to his ability and not ours. Oh, come on. 
he operates according to his ability and not ours. And then when he parted the Red Sea, how I many know there was no man that could explain that? But God is not looking to man for an explanation. He is looking to man for faith. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? And so this is what God is looking for. And so God is not a man that he should lie. So here's another thing that we need to ponder. He does not tell lies. Y'all with me? You know, men tell lies. Amen. Amen. Sometimes men can be fickle. And now when I say men, I'm saying mankind. So that includes women. So you guys, you know, women, you're not off the hook. Amen. We're, we're all under this thing. Come on. I mean, oh, you, you, sometimes your mind changes. I mean, you're, you know, you ever been in that situation or the mindset where you just, man, just so persistent in your thoughts towards something, then all of a sudden it changes then it's, it's as if you've lost interest in it or something like that. Well, see, with God, he doesn't make mistakes and he does not waver. Why? Because he's God. He's not man. He is, he does not have any limitations in him at all. Can y'all believe that? No limitations whatsoever in our God. And so God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent Neither the son of man that he should repent. And so what does this mean? He is not going to change his mind. See, God doesn't second guess. Man second guesses. Man could say, I want to give you this. And then all of a sudden, a little time passes. They get another bill come up. They say, oh, well, you know what? That money I wanted to give you, you know, I need to reconsider that because, Amen. See, when God says it, it's a done deal. And see, and that's what we need to be as a people. We need to focus on, I've been uh, doing the best that I can with the power that God has given me to keep you focused on the word. Because everything outside of us is going to change. But when the dust settles, this word will still be the same word. This word will still be working just as it always has been. But the enemy is trying to get you to look at something else so that now you don't build the faith necessary to stay the course. And so God doesn't repent, meaning he's not going to change his mind. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Y'all in here with me. Has God ever said anything that he didn't come through on? You know, there used to be a time in our world where your word was your bond. There used to be a time in our world where, you know what, we didn't have to have all these contracts and we didn't have to have all that. If you said you're going to do it, then you would do it. You shake on it and, and that was you can you can take it to the bank. Amen. You know, we weren't in that that age of bounce checks and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Now things have changed. But how many know God says, I am the Lord. I change not Malachi three, six. So he's still trustworthy. So he's always coming through. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make good? This is our God that we're talking about. Now, if we are reading this, we say, man, God can be trusted. Amen? Come on, look at your name and say, God can be trusted. I mean, I'm, think about it. This, this is the God we serve. And that's why I'm encouraging you tonight to keep believing no matter what, because we have to go based on God's track record. We have to go ahead and look at God's credentials and let's establish our faith on that. Don't let anybody cause you to start to now doubt. How can you doubt a God who is never lied? Think about it. How can I doubt a God who has never lied? Not once. How can I doubt a God who has never lost? Wait, everybody loses some, not God. God wins every time. Every day, no matter what day it is. And listen, you will win too as long as you're on his side. See, now you make a mistake when you start putting your trust in people. You start putting your trust in systems of the world. But we've got to be a people that say, oh, no, no. I know who I'm relying on tonight. 
The same one I was relying on yesterday. Uh, the same one I was relying on last week. And I'm still going to be relying on him tomorrow. Now, what's that going to do to your confidence? If you, if you start talking about, well, I'm going to go to sleep. And maybe you have some things that are yet to be resolved. But you can rest because, you know, oh, I prayed on it. So God's got it. When people cannot rest, uh, they obviously need to meditate on who God is. Because when you can't rest, when you're uneasy about things, that means one of two things has changed. God has changed. He's no longer faithful. Well, we know that's not possible. So what has happened? You starting to doubt him. Come on, somebody. You're starting to pay more attention to your current situation than your God. You're starting to doubt him. And that's why you're uneasy. But when you trust God, you'll know that he's going to work it out. As a matter of fact, you would have all confidence to know that if I stay with God, no matter what situation I'm in, he's going to work it out to my, to benefit me. I might not know all the answers, but I know God is God and he's in control and he does not lie. And so if he says that he works all things together for my good, then that settles it. Amen. Romans 8, 28. That is what it is. Amen. It's going to work out to benefit me. Why? Because I'm with him. The only way I can get in trouble is, is if I'm not with him. Amen. And so um, God can be trusted. And so you have to settle that in your heart. You have to settle that, you know, for yourself. Like, no matter what anybody else is thinking, what are you thinking? Come on, somebody. No matter if everybody else is questioning God and all that kind of stuff, what you doing? That's what this comes down to. This is personal. This is all about your own personal relationship with God. You know that your trust and your confidence in God is not going to change when you go through a trial. Unless it's not genuine. See, if it's not genuine, then it's better for you to find out now. Right. Can I get an amen right there? It's better for you to find out now. Oh, you know what? My trust in God was fickle. I'm glad I found out before I, I was, you know. It was my time to leave this earth. It's better for you to find that out now. So sometimes you go through something and it gives you an indication of where you are. You know, we can call it a wake up call. Amen. We can call it a, a, a checkpoint. Come on, how I many know sometimes you need to get a checkpoint? You'll be thinking I'm doing good and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just full of faith. And then something happens and then come on, your engine light goes off. <laughs> your engine light goes off and you start knocking down the road. It's like, what's going on? I thought you were well tuned. No, you, you need a tune up. You need to get in this word. You need to get your faith tuned up. Amen. Amen? Because that, that's what happens. You know, you go through things in life. No one is exempt from that. Jesus never said that we wouldn't go through things. Matter of fact, he said, I believe it's John, uh, I want to say 16, 33, somewhere in there. But he says, in this world, you should have tribulation. But he says, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And so what does that mean? I, no matter what I'm going through, I can look up. Because my help is in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to be all right. I'm going to make it through whatever it is. Because, what, he can't lie. Amen. So what if I start to be a person that knows more about this book, learns more about this book, and allows this book to penetrate not only my mind, but my heart. And then now my expectations are set based upon the book. Now, the way you find out if God is trustworthy, I mean two ways. First, you find out, okay, what his word says. But then now you will... Uh, if you open your eyes, you'll see him coming through for you in this life. Anybody here with me that has evidence where you say, you know what? God came through for me. I had a few things I was believing him for. And then, you know what? I didn't know what else to do. I just kept praying and God came through. He didn't came through. How many of y'all in here say God came through for me more than once? Yeah. It, it just seemed like he just always comes through. See? Now, how could you ever doubt him? Because you already got the proof. Amen. And then now his word is letting you know that you can continue to trust him regardless of what others say and do. Go to Romans now. Romans three. Romans three. We'll look at Romans three and four in the King James. I just want to give you something to chew on. Amen. 
That's what these Wednesday nights are in, uh, intended to do. Give you something that will inspire you and keep you through the rest of this week. Because we're just going to keep building on this thing. Amen. Oh, I'm going to just say it right now. Uh, look at your name and say, your faith is growing daily. Come on, somebody at home, just tell them your faith. Tell somebody, my faith is growing daily. Man, I'm telling you, this is what's going on. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. We stick with God. We start to focus on him and his ability and not be limited by what others cannot do. Then I, we're going to, man, we're going to get better every day. And so he says here, uh, let me see. Yeah, King James. He says, for what if some did not believe? OK, so just stop right there. You know, you guys know I like to teach you. Cause I don't believe in just, you know. Well, and hooping and hollering and you go out of here and you ain't got nothing. Amen. Glory to God. You, I'm up in here sweating and you don't even know what two scriptures I went to. We don't do that at this church. I'm going to teach you. Amen. Glory to God. So he says, for what if some did not believe? Y'all hear me? What if some didn't believe? So you've got to establish this yourself. Because what if all your family said, enough? What if your family's talking all that death? Talking all this, well, it's going down, it's looking bad, and it's this and that. What's that got to do with you? Amen. Come on. See, I told you, you've got to establish this yourself for you. You can't be trying to live on somebody else's faith. You've got to establish this for yourself. And so for what if some did not believe? I'd be like, so sorry for you. But I'm going to keep believing. But what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Hold on. I got to stop right there. If they don't believe, so the lack of faith of others can't stop your faith from working for you. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Don't you know when some folks ain't giving up on God, other people getting healed. Right. Oh, come on. That, like the young man I said that they, they, they told me about, that, that young man, he had said he was believing God to heal him. He even said, don't look on Google because, you know, it, the, the reports are bad. Well, he chose to believe something else. And so even if other people don't have faith, that can't stop you. That can't stop your faith from working. Um, come on, somebody. If everybody's talking about, well, I don't know what to do. But if you say, I'm going to believe God, then guess what? They ain't getting nothing and you're getting all your stuff. Because this is what the word says. He says, but what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Next verse. God forbid. See? God won't allow that. He ain't going to allow somebody with no faith to ruin it for you. Well, I was trying to believe, but then, you know, my cousin came over and then, you know, she started talking about all this stuff. And so cut her off. <laughs> Tell her bye. Come on, somebody, your, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, they come over there and they start talking that faithlessness. Then now it's time for them to say bye. Right. Bye, Felicia. Remember that? <laughs> Y'all with me? I mean, think about it, because I'm trying to get my stuff. I ain't got time to be playing with you. Ah, well, you know, but what about I ain't I'm not into what about. I'm in the book. I'm in the what I ain't in no what about. I ain't no what about for me. I'm going to believe God. If I didn't found out that God can't lie, why am I going to change now? Amen. I'm, I'm thinking we start saying this is the promises. God doesn't know how to lie. No, just because maybe it takes a little while. That's what else you got to do. Think about it. What else you got to do? Say it isn't taking too long. So what? What you going to do now? You going to give up and just what? No, you're going to keep believing. So you need to tell the devil if he said this is taking too long. Say so what? I'm just going to keep believing. Well, what you going to do tomorrow? Believe. What you going to do the next day? Believe. I'm going to keep believing. And then whatever that thing is that I was believing for, when I get it, I'm going to shout and, and stomp on your head. 
And isn't that what happens? We believe God for stuff, and then it comes through. We just give God a praise. And we're thankful that we didn't give up. Think about it. You know, some of y'all saved right now because somebody said, oh, well, I'm just going to keep believing. Oh, y'all in here. This might be the... I, this might be the perfect group coming in here on Wednesday. Y'all just born, just came out saved. Came out with anointing oil in your hand. Just, you know, I'm here for the Lord. <laughs> but others of us that took some prayer. You know what I mean? Where, you know, some folks was praying and they said, Lord, save them. And then they didn't see no results. They said, well, Lord, save them. <laughs> and they didn't give up. And eventually that thing kicked in. Eventually, that thing kicked in. And so that's why the Bible tells us, you know, First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. You don't give up. You don't quit because you're going to keep believing. You know, it's going to work for you. This faith thing is going to pay off. You just got to stick with it. And you got to understand who it is that you trust. And so go to Psalm now, Psalm 20 and then verse 7. Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots. Here we go. See, they, they, they're constantly trying to get you to shift it, right? They want you to put confidence in. Listen, God can work through people. Don't get me wrong. So let's say God told somebody to come over there and give you a million dollars. Well, you're not going to praise the person. Oh, who's in here with me? You're going to praise God because God chose to use that person. Come on, somebody to bless you. So, you know where your blessings are flowing from. So I'm not going to uh, I mean, I'll tell them thank you, but I know it was God. And so some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. That's what we're going to do. Oh, that's what Word of Life is doing. Word of Life, Temecula Valley. Oh, we just trust in God. Amen. That's it. We just trust in God. Well, what about, and I hadn't thought about it, just trust in God. Never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see you begging bread. So we're going to be all right. Or we're going to keep trusting God. Amen. Amen. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. See, people get themselves all uptight all upset. They get to talking about stuff. Let me tell you something. Don't get emotionally involved in stuff that don't matter. Think about it. Don't get emotionally involved. Don't get all upset and all engaged and in the, don't get in the battle. Why? Because the battle was not yours. It is the Lord's. And so when we get in the battle, we get in God's way. You have trouble with somebody in this life or Maybe they're whatever. Things just don't seem like, you know, there's working out in your favor. Don't get in that battle. Because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. See, it's not going to be by might nor power. It's going to be by his spirit. And you've got to stay out the way. And if we just be a people that continue to trust him. How many in here with me? Let me make sure I'm at the right place. You got some stuff, some big stuff you've been believing God for. Come on, somebody, you got, you know what, matter of fact, glory to God, you came into 2020 with some high expectations and then the stuff shifted around. But how many of y'all still with me and you say, oh, but my expectations never left me. Come on, somebody, my expectations never changed. So I'm expecting any day now for stuff to shift into high gear for me. Because your expectations are of God. Amen. We don't we don't develop this. You know what I'm saying? We don't just uh, step into the year and see what happens and say, oh, you know what? Now I decide that this is going to be the year of what? Well, you can't do that. The year already started. So if you say this is the year this year, probably you guys will probably been saying this is the year of terror and destruction. <laughs> That's a word from the Lord. That ain't no word from the Lord. You're just watching the news. But you got to decide that. You know, before, see, when you start, God starts speaking to you about the upcoming year, that's by faith. And we walk by faith. Come on, somebody. And not by sight. And so we ought to be expecting big things because we were expecting big things before the year started. 
But if we were expecting man to give us those things, then I could see how we could be shaken. But if we were expecting God, a God who cannot lie, a God who's undefeated, a God who is faithful to his word, a God who can do anything, then I say we should be happy right now. Because that God is still in control. That God is still in charge. Some trust in chariots. We don't listen. We're not going to uh, put our trust in people. Systems of the world. We're going to keep our trust right where it belongs. Right there in God. Because he is faithful. I mean, I've seen God do some stuff that they said couldn't be done. Y'all in here with me. Come on, man. I'm just... Listen, man, this is the, this stuff is real. I keep saying this. I keep trying to share this as much as I can. Just pray. Pray on everything. Pray on everything. You know what I mean? I, I'll tell you guys something that's even just relates to where we are. And so where we are in this building, you know, for some reason, when it comes to our electric bill, they put us on this most expensive tier. I said, man. What's going on? You know, they changed some stuff. And so, uh, I, you know, we, we had it, but they switched it and, okay, some stuff. So, you know, we got blessed and all this kind of stuff. We, they just changed over some systems of something. And I said, man, well, hold on. That's all, yeah, because of the power that this place can demand. You have to be on this. And, uh, you know, because... We have, you know, this is a pretty big place. I mean, we got some couple of air. We got like three different units that run this. I mean, I, I understand all that. But I'm like, wait, though, we, we're not here that often. You know what I mean? So I found out that, you know, I was we were like getting double charged for per kilowatt, if you want to call it that, because we had the unit next door and they gave us a, a better rate over there because of whatever. I don't know. And that's how I knew the difference is that, wait a minute, we're getting double charged per kilowatt over here. So I get to call and call and call and, and they said, well, uh, you know what? There ain't nothing we can do. So what did I do? Kept praying. They said, oh, we can't do nothing. You, you got to have that rate for one year and then you got to meet all these marks. And after the year is up, we'll consider it and we'll do all this. Stuff. I'm like, dang. Okay, Lord, but I'm going to just need you to go ahead and do something. And I, we just kept praying. And then all of a sudden, moving out of that place, I called to confirm my shutoff. Then I said, oh, by the way, let me ask you something about this rate on this side. Seems like I'm being double charged. And uh, I don't think that's right because, you know, I act, I just start talking to the lady like I never talked about it before. Amen. I wasn't lying, but, you know. I had already talked to everybody. I've already said this, but I'm talking to her. It was a new lady to me. So I'm talking like a new conversation. And guess what? She said, oh, no problem. We'll just switch you back. We'll just switch you on to the lower tier. I said, well, praise God. <laughs> I mean, just like that. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now in my mind, I'm thinking, okay. I'm going to have to talk to somebody's supervisor, somebody's, I got, I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and show up at the S, whatever they call it, the SoCal. I'm going to have to just find out the corporate office and roll up in there. Just because, you know, I need to just go in there with my angel or something so they could see it. I didn't have to do, the lady just said, okay, we'll just switch you. Just be careful because if they think your demand's too high, they might switch you back, but we'll switch you. Now, for us, we're, you know, that might be simple, but y'all, y'all go here. We're talking about, this is hundreds of dollars. You see what I'm saying? And so this is big stuff. And so, but what if you just quit? So, well, they said, came, they said, didn't, they said, no. So I just, I'm just going to give up. They said, no. So I'm going to just move on. I'm going to go to something else. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. So we're going to keep praying. Amen. We're going we gonna to keep praying. And we have our expectations. Man, you guys just don't know. We didn't have so much favor at this church right here. I'm talking about financial stuff. We didn't have financial miracles. I mean, I shared this. I think the last one, even in this building, man, it must have been. 
that would have been, what, 70-something thousand dollars or, or more this last thing where they said we, we were supposed to be paying on something, they failed to charge us. It ain't our fault. <laughs> we paid all the bills that came in, but we <laughs> so they forgot to charge us something. But long story short, it's going to be about 70-something thousand dollars. You want to make payments? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we don't agree. <laughs> we don't want to pay payments. No, we don't want, we're not paying that. Amen? Amen. Well, I mean, I don't know. No, no, no. We're not going to pay that one. Man, and we, me and my wife, we said, we get to praying and said, we said, oh, wow. Okay, so she gets to talking. We start trying to talk to some lawyer friends and we're trying to get information. All the while, we believe in. Come on, somebody look at your name and say, you just got to keep believing God. It does not matter what man says. I was in my office talking to the lady. She said, oh, y'all going to have to pay it. She don't talk like me, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to have to pay that. Would you like to make payments? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want any payment pl plan. That's not a help to me. Uh, and so do you know that, that I got the call of my wife, she got the call on people, we doing our thing, and all the while we prayed. Now I did pray, Lord. Man, was it the next day? The next day she called and said, oh yeah, okay, we could scratch that. Well, thank you. Go right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all in here. I'm, I'm, why am I saying this? Because I can tell you there's so many personal things I've had to believe God for. And, but there's things in this church that we've had to stand and we've had to say no. No, we're not, we're not paying it. The other time they tried to take, this was another building, they tried to take $12,000 from us. Then they got irate. Just pay the money. I was like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you're taking a, you know, you're trying to stay in faith and, and in, in the spirit, but then you start getting, I ain't paying nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, then, then we went down and had a meeting, went at the place, man, went to the property management, went, had a meeting. My man just, he must've thought that I worked for him. And it was one of his board meetings and he wanted to tell some people off. You know, you old uh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Rabaka. Let me just start praying in tongues because he doesn't even know me. I mean, I'm saved, but yeah. All right, because you know what I'm saying? And so they were adamant that we were going to have to do it. Why am I saying this? Why am I? I believe the Holy Ghost has had me spending a little extra time on this. Don't give up. Listen, just because they say something. Oh, you can't have it. I didn't have, we didn't have people we prayed for. They said, you don't qualify for the house. Then all of a sudden, you don't give up and you get to have it. What if you would have gave up? Amen. So these people back with that example, they tried, they just... Want to demand. They want a strong arm. I'm like, okay, let me just peel it off right now. No, you ain't getting none of this. And man, all the way down, they kept going. I mean, the, thank the Lord, my wife had just copious bookkeeping on this, all these emails. But the one lady, so it's all about the, we were, we were supposed to come into a building at a certain time, but the building wasn't ready. And so what they do, they start charging us rent from the time that it was supposed to start. Well, you're going to charge me and I don't even have keys. I can't even get in the place. No. So sorry. So that's what it was all about. Well, you signed it and that's it. No, no. Then the lady was the, that was in charge of it was being so mean. All this stuff. But what we do, we kept saying we ain't paying it. We ain't paying it. Long story short, we didn't pay it. The person who was. All of a sudden, it got switched. The person who was so bad to us got removed from the company. Then another person came in. Oh, well, I'm taking over this. And, oh, you know you got to pay this. You want to make payments? No. It's like we told the last people, we ain't paying it. And this man tried to be, 
a little aggressive, messed around and got sick and almost died. Guess what? When he came up out the hospital, oh, you guys don't owe anything. Thank you. Just uh, that's what we said from the beginning. Why? Because we will keep believing God no matter what. You're going to keep believing God. God is a trustworthy God. And don't you dare allow man to intimidate you. Man's going to push you up against the wall and say, you don't have a, enough money to do it. You can't have it. No, you keep believing God. Y'all with me? We have seen God work out some things in our favor. Why? Because we kept believing God. Go to Psalm 62, 5. You know this one. You should have it memorized because this is where your expectations should be. My soul waits out only upon God. For my expectation is what? From him. Don't listen. Man, I could tell you some things that I just feel this in my spirit. We've got to be encouraged, church. We've got to be encouraged to know that our God won't fail us. I remember me and my wife, we decided that we want to get a house up here and we want to move up here. Now, we're moving from San Diego. And before we said, well, to make this too far. But as it turned out, when the family's growing, well, you can get a house for a lot cheaper up here. But, you know, by faith, we were down there and we went and walked around a house down in San Diego. We walked the property and, and claimed it. Now we claimed it by faith. God gave us another one, but we still had an act of faith. Do you know that when we went down there just to see the house, the man, the realtor must have treated us like we were, man, like we were just coming straight off of the soup kitchen or something. He, I'm serious. He, we went up in there and he were like, well, in so many words, you don't even qualify for this. We just coming to look, man. It's a model home. We're just trying to look. And what? The devil's trying to get somebody to stifle your faith. Not even stifle, just cut it off right there. Don't you even dare believe for no house because you cannot afford it. So you know what? Me and my wife could have took and, and we could have turned and walked out there and said, well, you know, we might as well just, we probably should look for something smaller because, you know, this is going to be out of our range anyway. So there's no need in us even trying. No, we went and got up in there and walked around it claiming that thing. Even though at the gate they said, you, psh, you can't afford this. Well, how many know, I'm not trying to get it based on my money. Oh, anybody in here with me? Come on, man. I'm not trying to get it based on my money. And so... We did that act of faith and that wasn't the house that God had for us. God decided he wanted us to move up here, which ended up being better. If we hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met all of you. But so God does that. And next thing you know, we're we find a house and it was actually even a just just as nice and everything. But it was just up here and it comes time. So now we're going through the process to try to buy the house. Everything's working good for us. We're having favor. Well, in the midst of that, I lost my job. And so now, and at that time, my wife was uh, taking care of the kids. She was not working outside at home. She was working with the kids. And that's something we decided by faith that we were going to do. She was homeschooling our kids. So wait, now we don't have any income. Amen? Y'all in here, anybody? I'm telling you, this, I don't come, when I preach about stuff, that's why I'm committed to this for life, because I ain't making this up. I got tangible stuff. I could be preaching all night just giving you examples of what God has done. And so I'm just encouraging you to keep believing no matter what. And so next thing you know, we're like, well, oh, what are we going to do? Well, we know this message, keep believing God. We got to keep believing God. Well, do you know that somehow somebody got a hold of our file and, and they I think they told my wife or they told me, oh, don't worry about it. You're still going to get the house. Wait. Um, I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you don't qualify for no house when you don't have a job. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> Amen. But how many know if you keep believing God? 
He blessed us. We got the house. Amen. We got the house and man, everything went well. Lived there for a little while and then moved and got a bigger house. He just been showing up and showing out. But all along, we just been continuing to believe him. Continuing. Amen. This I, I just feel such an anointing on this because I feel like people need to know if you set your expectations. My expectation is of God. See, that's what I'm doing. See, I'm going to keep believing him. I'm going to keep believing him. Amen. And God will show up. God will show out. He'll fix things for you. He'll turn things around. You'll have people closing the door in your face, slamming it, slamming it closed. No, 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 no. Okay, so our second house, I might as well just tell you this too, because this is so powerful. Our second house, so we're in there and comes to find out, you know, whatever. I don't know what it was. The interest rate was too high or something, but so we're now upside down in the house. This is when 08, the crash and all this stuff, everybody's house is messed up. Everybody's losing their houses. And we're in our zone. And all this stuff is going on. It's just people losing houses, people walking away from their houses left and right all over the place. We did it. And there was this program where supposedly they could switch it for you and they can get your interest rate change and there was principal forgiveness. It was supposed to be all this stuff. So I remember me and Elder Patsy, we go up to San Francisco because you had to go there and you had to be in this one place at this one time. And we get in there and we're in line and man, we must have stayed as slept in the parking lot. Just, I mean, it was, man, it was a rough struggle. But we're trying not to lose the house. Amen. And so we get there, man, and by the time you get in line, get in there, and then they say, oh, no, we're not even working with your bank. <sighs> After we went all the way up there, stayed out there, man, in line, had to take turns in line, getting a little rest, other ones in the line, and then all to find out, nope, we can't help you. So what are we going to do? Keep believing God. Come on, y'all. Y'all in here? Y'all getting the theme of this message? What do you do? You keep believing God. And so, man, we, we left and we went through some trouble, man. It was a, it was a troubling time. You know, I'd be in the, the office. I was doing uh, insurance and stuff, but I'd be in my office working and people just coming up, driving in my driveway. I'm like, who are these people? They just check in on my house. They like, yeah. You know, I'm like thinking they trying to get the house. And so they're coming up, checking, you know, they want us to go on the foreclosure. They just waiting. They just waiting and they driving up and, you know, coming around, taking pictures of the house. And I'm like, oh, Lord. So I'm, I'm I, me and my wife, we went through it, man. But we just kept believing God. Then all of a sudden, come on, look at your name and say, then suddenly. <laughs> See, you could be waiting for something, man. You could be waiting for a while and it seems like it's taking forever. And then God just turns it and he fixes it. And you're going, what? All of a sudden, he turned the whole thing around. We, did we get some in the mail? We got some in the mail and said, you, need, you qualify for this. All you got to do is sign these papers. I mean, we didn't even apply for this stuff. And they gave us this thing to where it knocked off what? How, so much, 300 and some thousand dollars of that mortgage got knocked. I'm talking about forgiven. Over 300 and some thousand dollars knocked off. Interest rate dropped to almost nothing, all this stuff. And all I had to do was sign it. Oh, I'll take that. But before I went up to San Francisco, standing in the line, man, and sleeping in the car. No, could, no we can't help you. But what do you do? You just keep believing God. Listen, man's no does not mean anything. Because God's got a yes for you, but you got to be the one that says, I'm going to keep on believing. And so they fix that stuff, man. And I'm telling you, we didn't all we had to do was say, yes, we'll take it. And I remember in the midst of that, while I was going through this stuff, I was talking to a lady on the phone and I believe it was an angel, man, to give me encouragement. She was an islander lady. And I'm just I'm asking all these questions. I'm like, these people coming up in my driveway and what's all this? And, and then she said, be at peace. <laughs> I said, be at peace. But that was so true. Be at peace. 
And I believe that was God letting me know, I got this. Don't worry about it. I got this. So are you understanding that God just wiped out over 300 and some thousand dollars off of our mortgage? There's no payback. There's no it's just gone. Forgiven. What? Because he's God. He could change the rules at any time, man. The rules could be this way and he could change them all tomorrow. He could change everything. But we've got to be a people that say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to keep believing God. Amen. Psalm 62, 11. Let's go 11 and 12. Man, I'm just excited about this. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Look at your name and say, God's got all the power. Ooh, I'm telling you, man, listen, <laughs> ain't no need to get uptight. Because he could change it from one day to the next. Your status could totally change from one day to the next. Just like that. From one day to the next. You've been struggling over here and then tomorrow. Oh, praise God. I'm in a new season. Amen. I'm in a new season. You can be in a new season in one day. From one day to the next. But you've got to keep believing God. Next verse, verse 12. Also unto thee, O Lord, belong his mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. And so it's going to be according to you. I preached on Sunday. Make sure you're living your life to please God. You, you live to please God. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what everybody else is talking about. You live to please God. You live a life of faith. And you be one that says, I'm going to trust God no matter what. I'm not going to doubt my God. I'm not going to give up on God. I'm not going to put my dreams away. I'm going to keep believing. God because he's still God he's able and he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we could possibly ask or think Ephesians 3:20. now let's go to Hebrews now Hebrews chapter 10 I want you to stick with this church don't quit don't give up don't throw in the towel whatever you started out believing God for this year stick with it Hopefully, you know how we do it in this church at uh, New Year's Eve. We come and put our 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 faithless on the altar and we believe God. Now, prayerfully, I, I did tell you guys you should have a copy of it, but you should be looking at that. Don't just leave it in the shelf somewhere. Look at it. Remember, this is what I started out this year believing for. I'm going to keep on believing this. So it says here, so don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Look at your name and say, I trust the Lord. See, don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now that you will continue to do God's will. See, that's what keeps us on track. We are we have patience, man. We're willing to endure no matter what. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey him today. I'm going to obey him tomorrow. I'm going to keep this thing going. And so he says, that we'll have this patient endurance so that you will continue to do the will of God. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Amen. You're going to receive everything that God has in store. Look at your name and say, God's got good stuff in store for me. OK, come on. Look at your name and say, God's got some good stuff with my name on it. Amen. Now we're going to close here, but go to uh, James chapter one, verse 17. We're getting ready to close. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let's look at this in the message translation. I want to tell you, God is not fickle. God is, is consistent. And you just got to be consistent in your faith and your believing in him. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light. Casting down from the father of light. There is nothing deceitful in God. Nothing two faced it. Nothing fickle. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to keep trusting my God. Yeah, see, you just keep believing. Amen. So you got it right there. We, I want us to close, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to uh, activate your faith tonight. Amen. I want you to activate your faith. If you have something that you've been believing God for. And, and you say, you know what? I've been believing God for this and I'm not going to give up on it. So what I want you to do right now is just stand up 
as an act of faith. Now, if you have something you've been believing God for and it just maybe it hadn't happened yet, but you're going to just by tonight, you're going to do it as an act of faith. If you're at home right now, you have something you've been believing God for. I want you to stand up at your home. I want you to stand up and act as though you're in here. And so I want you to now we're not going to come to the altar, but I, I need you to at least take one step. We got enough room in these seats. OK, just take one step. That's an act of faith. See, you just took one step towards your breakthrough. Amen. You took one step towards your breakthrough. Now I want you to stretch your hands. You're at home right now. Stretch your hands to this that TV side because I want to I'm going to touch everybody by faith. I'm not going around touching, but I'm going to touch you in the spirit and we're going to see God move. And you're showing right now that you are believing God. You're showing right now that you have not given up. You have not given up on your dreams. You have not given up on what God can do for you because you know he is able and you're establishing that right now in this place that your faith and your confidence is in God. Father, just bless these right now as they have taken this step of faith. Even at home, they've taken this step of faith. And they're still believing you, God. So I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus that you move mightily, that you move swiftly. Oh, we thank you right now that every roadblock is removed right now. We speak to that spirit of delay and we cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. We are exercising our faith. We have confident trust in you and we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, God of heaven, we expect everything that we started out believing for. We're going to keep believing it. And we're going to see it come to pass in our lives. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you now in Jesus name. Go ahead and clap because your stuff is coming your way. Your stuff is coming your way. Can't nobody stop it. God is not going to stop it. The devil can't interfere. It's yours for the taking. And the way you get it is by faith. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray for somebody who might be watching this who doesn't know Jesus. Father, we just ask right now that you would move on the hearts of people. Maybe there's someone watching who's wanting to step into this and they don't know how. We ask that you touch them right now. That you open up their hearts so that they can receive your truth. If you're home watching us right now, we want you to repeat this prayer because there's room in this kingdom, this kingdom of God for you. I want you to repeat this prayer and I want you to say it with confidence. Let's repeat this together. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. I believe people are getting saved right now. Amen. I want you to stretch your hands to heaven. We're just going to seal this. Father, we just thank you right now. Lord, we came out here and we tuned in at home because we know you have a word for us. And we received that word into our hearts that it would bring forth a mighty harvest. As we step out of this place, we never step away from your presence. Lead us and direct us and continue to surround us with favor as with the shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen. <laughs>